Hello, I'm Timothy Hobbs, and today I'm going to be doing another live stream for Vegan Buddies. I'm a little bit frustrated today because I spent several hours trying to figure out why uh, the GitHub action that I was using to upload the changes to the website to FTP why that GitHub action wasn't updating when I updated the code. And I spent several hours trying various things until I figured out that you have to do NPM build locally and commit the changes into Git in order to actually make the changes apply. I'm not used to this uh, workflow because I've been typically told by people, and I believe it myself, that you shouldn't commit um, compiled assets into Git, but apparently the NPM world and the GitHub Actions workflow world uh, does something different, and it took me hours to figure that out. Um, so that was a bit of a waste of the time, and now I'm doing this screencast offline because my internet's not working properly. It's not very stable. So, to get started, I would like to remind myself what exactly I was doing last time. It's one of the nice things about having the screencast is that I can go here. Why is this a moment? So here I was trying to figure out why the website wasn't uploading properly, but now I have it uploaded properly and I can go here and I can go to the end of last week's screencast, which was two hours long and I can see, oh, that video is a little bit weird. And not just a little bit, it's very weird. Ah, that's not nice. Um, so I, I, I don't see See, I guess I was t kind of tired. I wasn't really talking then. Uh, so I don't really hear myself saying what what I was doing exactly. But um, I was working on a test bot for testing the matrix bot that I'm going to create. And I had previously wanted to use a library called matrix bot API for Rust that I like that's very, very simple and easy to set up. And I found that that library simply did not support creating rooms and create, starting private chats. And so it was impossible to write a test bot with it. Uh, the library is kind of abandoned where now. And so I had to try to figure out how to use the official, or I guess not official, I don't know if it's official anyways, like this other much better maintained matrix rust api library and the much better maintained a library that has the support for the functionality that i need is much more complicated in any case right now um i have uh, okay it's not uh, yeah the matrix sdk so i have it here if I go into Vegan Buddies and I do de develop, so I enter into the Docker container that has all of the build dependencies, then I can do cargo check and it will tell me that everything is broken because I didn't actually finish anything last time. And so it's saying that it needs Tokyo uh, to be somehow declared. And in main, So Tokyo, I, so I'm trying to run the main function as a Tokyo, in a Tokyo um, 
what to call it runner i don't remember what it's called and i guess i'll just google that do the google loop i had copied this code from a tutorial on using the matrix sdk or it was actually an example but the example wasn't complete with the cargo files and everything and so it despite having simply copied it um i okay so so i need to just install Tokyo in crates. So I'm going to go to crates dot, uh, or in cargo.toml. I need to add Tokyo there. So to Tokyo. I'm not really sure why this is necessary because I think that um, it's Tokyo is a dependency of the matrix SDK. Dependencies. To Tokyo, yeah, it is a dependency. So I'm not really sure why I would have to add this dependency again, but I'm going to go ahead and install the exact same version of Tokyo as is depended on by the matrix SDK. So go ahead and add the, uh, what? I copied this and now I paste it. Okay, now it's working. And now I can do cargo check again. Could not find main in Tokyo. Am I going to end up with a situation where I'm reading documentation that's out of date? I don't like that. Okay, this is getting complicated. So it's not like... Hmm. Okay, I'll just copy paste, copy paste. Why is that? Uh-huh, I see. I have an extra quote here and a extra comma here. And now we can try this again. Failed to select a version of Tokyo which could resolve this conflict. Okay, so I'll just remove DNS. And TCP. Uh-huh, this is interesting. It's doing something else. So now we have a different error. This error originates in the attribute macro Tokyo main in nightly builds run with Z macro backtrace for more information. The default runtime flavor is multi-thread, but the Arte multi-thread feature is disabled. Okay, so I'm just going to copy this to the feature flags in Tokyo and see if it doesn't help. I was having a lot of trouble understanding this Tokyo code and what I ended up doing 
was I ended up watching this two hour long screencast on using Tokyo and I would highly recommend it to anyone who needs to understand how Tokyo and Asynchros work. I will show a link to that in a second. Um, I just have to look it up. John John Good Jeng Set. I don't know how you pronounce his name. Uh, and I go here. Wait. I need to somehow change it so that Firefox doesn't block um, pop ups that are created when I use surf keys. So I need to go and leech block override. And now it works. Uh, it doesn't work. Accept all. And now. The screencast that I was watching is. Um, Crust of Rust and probably all of these are amazing. Um, maybe it was Crust and Rust Async Await. Yeah, I think that was the, the, the cast that I saw and I would highly recommend it to anyone who needs to understand how Async Rust works. This guy is unfortunately much smarter than me. I would very much like to be as smart as he is, but I'm not. So we have a different error. That's wonderful. Um, not found in the scope on room message. Okay. So now we're getting into things that Are just copy pasta er errors. So if I just cop, uh, um, comment everything out, I still have one error. And that is that this main function is supposed to um, return a result and it doesn't. So it's going to return um, I'm not sure how to package that correctly. Uh, like that. Waiting on lock file. Okay. Like that. Okay. So now at least we have something that builds and mm, after having got it to build. So I need to convert this pseudocode to actual code and I need to actually add some more pseudocode. So, um, in, 
in here, we're going to go ahead and do um, bot dot create room create and join room and the room that we want to be in is uh let room e let mute room equals bot dot create and join room and we want it to be a private room and we want it to be with I'm just doing pseudocode, you know, and I should probably make the font size bigger. Okay, that should be good. And then we can go to args and user to test. So I think that right now I will build this and see if the arg parsing code is actually set up correctly. I do not recall the state that this thing is in. One of the downsides of coding once a week for an hour. I guess I have to install everything uh, since I've just added this Tokyo thing, it seems like there's quite a f I actually just added the new library as well, so there's quite a few dependencies to pull in. 334. How long is this going to take? So in the meantime, I can go ahead and go back to the Rust uh, matrix Rust SDK, and I can find more information about how to use it. Still going. So slow. Maybe I should buy a faster computer. I thought this was a fast computer, but apparently for Rust it's quite slow. Um, maybe I'll switch to using a desktop computer. I don't know. Um, so... Where are those examples? In contrib? Nope. I guess this is actually an official uh, SDK since it's on the matrix org uh, GitHub. I'm going to go ahead and star this. Save. And I know there were examples. I was looking at them last time. And now I don't see them.
Ah, uh, yes, I remember now. It's in crates, matrix SDK, and then in examples. So, Here's a, so, so this example just, whenever somebody types in exclamation mark party into a channel that this bot is in, then uh, it'll respond let's party. And how does it get into a channel? Um, it's kind of unclear to me. I really don't see how it joins a channel. Do you, are you supposed to like join the channels manually? Uh, so, so it like has this on room message handler and This is interesting that Rust has this weird pattern matching thing. Like this room could be any number of states and it pattern matches to unwrap the room from that state. I don't think I've ever seen that in any other programming language. Anyhow, um, this just looks at the message that's come in I'm not sure why they didn't use the same kind of if statement here. Like they could have said if let event dot content dot message type uh, colon colon message type colon colon text, right? I, I don't know. I don't know if they could have used the same syntax, but anyhow, they have a return here. So it automatically returns if the message is not a text message. So it could be an attachment, I guess. And if it is a text message, then it, the message body gets put into this message body value variable. And then if the message body contains party, that's actually, I think, bad code. Because what if it ends in party? Uh, or it just happens to be that somebody doesn't put a space here. Does that mean the bot should respond to that command? I think it should be equal, not contains. But, or starts with maybe. But who do I, what do I know? I just think that it should be starts with. Anyhow, um, I've built this and I can do dot slash target debug um, matrix bot tester and it does indeed print out a help message. And if I go ahead and do bot config equals foo, uh, uh huh. it will print out an error message because the file foo was not found. Um, and that's because I'm writing bad code. I'm unwrapping somewhere, I think. Yeah. So I should definitely not be unwrapping here. I guess I can start with doing this, fixing this actually. Um, Oh, 
what do I want to do instead? I want to do match uh, or is there like an unwrap or exit? So it doesn't panic. So do I have use std process so I can import that and then I can do I guess match uh, this and then I can do rather than unwrapping I can do OK. And this is actually an a statement, not an expression. And here I will do nothing, pass. I don't know if what, uh huh, like that, I guess. And then error E. E print ln E. I need to put these in curly brackets since I need to have two lines here. And then something like that. Something like that. Let's try this. Uh, this is not error, but error. Super, so now uh, I just need to replicate this code to the other ones. I don't know if there's like a much more idiomatic way of writing this code. I think that there must be, but I don't know what it is. It seems kind of verbose, but at least it's easy to understand. Okay, so Put that sucker here. Uh, get rid of this unwrap. Add these curly guys. Put in that. And then just copy pasta this in there. And go ahead and do rust. Rust FMT Cargo install Rust FMT. I don't know if that works. Now my internet's working, it seems. I do hope this is a recording. I'm going to go ahead and check that. 
Yeah, 30 minutes have been recorded so far, and hopefully the audio is working as well. So where were we? So, um, I remember that I already made some kind of, uh, config file uh, for the other bot and I will go ahead and copy that over to this bot so that I don't have to duplicate that effort. So test data bot config.toml and I go and copy that over to uh, util matrix bot tester and I can put that also in test data uh, bot config dot and wait what the heck Yeah, my computer is really struggling to deal with recording and uh, compiling and coding at the same time. Um, not sure to what extent that's due to the virtual machine and to what extent it's just the fact that my computer is not fast enough or that the software that I'm using is somehow crazy, like inefficient. Not really sure. So. Still building. So I actually need to have this file with a little bit different contents because for testing I'm not going to use the user for the main bot but I'm going to use the user for the uh, testing bot and the testing bot has a uh, user named uh, mock client and the password is test just like with the main bot. So this user is mock client and then over here, here, I need to see what the other file is. So I, I first load in the bot config and then I'm going to load in the replay file and the replay file Hmm. I'm not really sure how how this would work in Toml. Maybe I'll put it YAML. I think that this config library doesn't care what the uh, format is. I just re recall the syntax of YAML better. So what I want in my replay file is to have an array of messages so messages and then it's going to be an array send and then expect bar and then the next message send lol expect baz send hmm expect firm something like that it just occurs to me what if uh, there needs to actually be multiple messages sent or expected in a row. Then this format won't work. Like it doesn't really have the concept of expect, expect, you know, to expect a number of messages. So maybe I need to work on that format a little bit. Hmm. Maybe it shouldn't be that um, 
maybe it shouldn't be a loop that expects exactly two things. It should um, loop uh, in such a way that it could be possible to do expect baz like that and be expecting yet another message. So maybe I should have it like that actually. That kind of looks nicer, I think. Or maybe it should support the pairs because I guess it does kind of make sense visually that they're paired. And if there's something that's not paired, then you just have it separately. And that means that what I need to do is I need to first send and then expect. And I only send if this get succeeds. So I'm not going to unwrap here. In fact, I shouldn't be unwrapping at all. I should be matching uh, like that maybe and yeah that looks nice an if let's send and then yeah that kind of makes sense to me intrinsically and then an if if let expect not sure what's going on with the indentation like i guess rust doesn't like it when you code inside the comments or at least emacs doesn't like that so going to uncomment that for a little while and So it's gonna be something like this, I guess. If let send, if let expect. Um, yeah. And then I'm going to comment this out again because obviously this code is still just pseudocode. And I still haven't figured out how I'm gonna deal with the big thing in the room, the asynchronous aspect of things that I don't know if there is such a thing as waiting for a message to be received or if you have to do that through a handler. Um, so I can go ahead and do Rust format SRC. Uh, it takes a specific I'm really confused. This version of Rust format is deprecated. Use Rust format nightly. Use force to run deprecated Rust format. Like what? You're supposed to use the unstable version of Rust format. And I just waited half an hour to get it to build just to be told that I shouldn't be using it. That's really confusing. 200 new things that have to be built. Okay. So I guess that Rust is a somewhat unstable language. I remember that I was reading the source code to a matrix client that uses this um, library. Previously, I was reading the source code to Fractal and Fractal uses 
Uh huh. Uh. I guess fractal. I shouldn't be reading that actually because this is not using the matrix SDK. It's using a different API. Wait, I'm confused because I was under the impression that the Git version of Fractally has switched. I remember that I read that. Uh, fractal. So gnomes GitLab. Okay, so now when I try to run install Rust format nightly, it says that I'm not using nightly, which I knew I wasn't ever using nightly. Now I'm frustrated. Again. So I recall that here. Now that the matrix rest SDK exists, which does a lot of the heavy lifting for us, we have a good starting point to build fractal without the need to implement every single feature of the matrix API. Finally, with the release of, of GTK 4.0, we would need to rework most of Fractal's code anyways, because GTK is horribly unstable. They change everything for no reason, every release, and cause everybody to do a whole bunch of extra pointless work. Therefore, it just makes sense to start over and build Fractal with all the features, e.g. end-to-end encryption, we have in mind. A year ago, we started working on rewriting Fractal from scratch using GTK 4 and the matrix Rust SDK. This effort was called Fractal Next. Fractal Next now replaced our previous codebase and has become the new nightly version. It isn't ready for release, and you can is it isn't yet ready for release, and you can follow along our progress towards it by looking at the feature parity and Fractal 5 Fractal Next milestones. So I thought that when they repl they wrote Fractal Next now replaced our previous code base, that meant that this code base here is the Fractal 5 code base. And I was spending time reading this code base, trying to understand how Matrix Rust SDK works. And I was actually looking at a code base that doesn't use the Matrix Rust SDK. Maybe there's a branch here. I remember I even looked at these branches and I do not see a branch for that. So I guess I can look here and see if I'm not crazy. Okay, and so what is this fractal version? Cargo.toml. Um, what? So this is from 2019, right? What? How did that end up on my disk? Okay, so now I think that I have the right code base.
Okay, so now if I go to cargo.toml matrix SDK, then it's actually pulling in what I thought should be being pulled in. And I see that they're using the git version. Hopefully that's not radically different than whatever version I'm using. In any case, rest format has installed again, and I can try to do force. And it doesn't like me. And when I do check, I'm really confused now. What just happened? I guess I shouldn't have done force. Thirty-three. Maybe it's fine. Maybe I just have messed up the syntax somehow. Okay, so I have a problem here that I did a copy pasta error, I think, and this should be replay. And this should also be replay. Wait. Ah, that's a different copy pasta error than I thought. Now it should be good. What? What? Super. So now I can go ahead and do cargo build. And I can test it like manually. Configuration file foo not found. And then if I go and do dot dot slash dot dot slash, um, no, just one, uh, one directory level up. No, actually no directory up levels up. Test data dot config dot toml configuration file bar okay so I actually need to change the error messages here and this needs to be settings file and uh, I guess I should be like error loading replay file error loading settings file and this would be in test data 
replay.yaml. Wait. Nothing's happening. Is it hung on one of these awaits? On client login, for example, or client sync? Why would it be hung? If I do that, and if I rebuild it, does it still hang? Uh, it doesn't hang, so sync is hanging. Okay. Not sure what to do about that, but... Anywho. I guess it's not that important right now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and commit these changes. Um... Okay, so I'm going to commit that and, oh, commit that and then I'm going to go ahead and commit this. These changes should not be committed. So here, these, uh, these two libraries are actually used by the matrix bot tester. And I need to decide whether I want to use the same Docker file and Docker image for the matrix bot tester and the uh, matrix bot, the geographic user index matrix bot, or if I want to use two different Docker images. And I'm not going to commit that for now so that I remember that I need to uh, figure that out. Clap, clap, same version. I do not see, did I change the order of things? Okay, so that is no longer an issue do you and so here i removed white space and i'm going to go ahead and commit that fine and now I'll go ahead and try the Rust format, just out of curiosity. Uh huh. So this um, deprecated Rust format actually does not work. I'm really confused as to why, but hmm. I'll leave that for now. I seem to recall using Rust format a number of times. I don't know what's the, the issue now. Why I need some special nightly Rust format.
Okay, so I've currently gotten things building and loading. The client.sync function is hanging. I'm going to go ahead and load up element and try to figure out what the trouble is with this client.sync. Uh, if it's not that it doesn't work because that account hasn't been fully set up yet. So if I go to element desktop, and log out and sign in with mock client test. Um, what was that username again? Mock client and the password test. Uh-huh other home server. Sign in. Okay, so now I can sign in here. I don't have any rooms or people and if I go ahead and uncomment sync, that's a really, really long time to be blocking for waiting for a lock file that shouldn't be in any contention whatsoever, I'm not, I don't think running anything else. I guess it's possible that Emacs is contending the lock file because Emacs is trying to show error messages. The only thing that really occurs to me is that when Emacs is running cargo check, it's locking the build directory. So again, it's hanging. I'm not sure if I shouldn't be using some kind of logging levels or some kind of special logging function or macro for this. I'll look that up at some point or I'll ask somebody. Um, certainly this should be log level info. And this part should be log level verbose.
Rust is really bizarre that you start thinking about whether it's better to resolve a pointer or copy uh, a variable or a string and you're like, oh, it's a short string, I should copy it. And then you're just like, well, what am I even thinking about? Why am I thinking about this? This is such a low level question. It doesn't matter at all. Mm -hmm. So it's hanging, but it actually didn't get here. So was it a fluke that that one time it didn't hang? Or is the sync actually important for making it hang? Wait, what? What? It hangs before it gets there? Now I'm super confused. What? What did I even change? See, so it didn't compile previously, and so I don't need to do this logging message. It's going to hang at the place that it hangs. Pring. So I've heard that the reason why Rust is so slow to build is actually because the linker is incredibly slow and that it's possible to replace it, replace the linker with a different linker that's like creates larger binaries, I think they said, and then it'll be super fast. So I need to look into doing that apparently because the build time is really very slow. So it is actually hanging on syncing and I guess one thing that I'd like to check is if I go ahead and change this test data to have the wrong password, it still says logged in successfully. Why? What? That's just confusing. That's really confusing. Hmm.
But it seems like the that it was actually was logging in since there were messages here that said it was lo that there were new logins. Security and privacy. Seventeen fifty seven. Okay, so I don't see anything new here. And if I change this password back and I do my login, then I see something new and I can re rename this. Just like that. And if I switch this to the wrong password, and I come over here and I go here and then I go here so there's no new logins I run it again go here and then here there's no new logins okay I switch this to the correct password login go here and then here okay there is a new login so if the password's wrong it goes it falls straight through but it doesn't show any error messages if the password's right then it still hangs on uh, the uh, still hangs on uh, sync so just a moment I'm going to check OBS if it's working OBS an hour and eight minutes everything seems fine still uh nix now what next so i need to figure out how to f how to make it crash or show an error message when the password is wrong uh just one thing at a time eventually i'll get it working is there really no actual documentation for this? Maybe I can find some documentation that's like really useful. Uh... The library is in an alpha state. Things that are implemented generally work, but the API will change in breaking ways. If you are interested in using the matrix SDK now is the time to try it out and provide feedback. Okay, but I do not see docs. Uh-huh. That seems promising. So, here, the client thing. And if we go over here, login result. Um... So if I change this code to have it be like um, match, okay, do nothing, error, e, print, e, e print, in to something like that so I'm printing out the error and exiting if it failed to log in ah oh, this is a macro That's an expression.
I guess I could have saved time if I had read the warnings because I bet that there was going to be a warning unused result uh, about that login thing. I didn't have to like be like, why is it like not throwing in errors? Because I was discarding an unused result and there was a big orange message saying that probably. What am I doing? Invalid password, excellent. So, So we're moving along here, and the next thing that I want to figure out is why sync is hanging. What can we find out about sync? Repeatedly synchronize the client state with the server. This message will never return. If cancellation is needed, the message should be wrapped in a cancelable task. That kind of explains why, um, why there's a problem. It doesn't return, it hangs. Um, okay, so basically the only way that they want you to be using this is to have these handlers. But I'm going to try to see if I can't do sync once. And here we have that result that must be used. Um, I'm going to see what happens if I do that. This linking really is very slow. Excellent. So the sync no longer hangs. And I actually want to figure out if I can't get it so that the rust linker is faster. Okay, so um, a bunch of Rust fan personism. Z. Not interested in cargo check because I need to actually build it to test it.
Okay, so mold. Um, Did doing cargo clean just delete everything and now I have to reinstall everything again? It seems like this flag is being followed so I'm not sure why they said that it needs nightly but hopefully it doesn't need nightly and I'll actually get these timings So if it turns out that linking is the problem, which I should find out soon, then um, I'll install mold. If not, uh, I guess I can continue reading. I guess I when I get tired I don't really like want to talk constantly it just like it wears me down. I don't understand these people who are just able to constantly constantly um do commentary. Copy copy link and then private window
still compiling, still slow. I'm not seeing any hard numbers showing Uh huh. And how do I do that? How do I install that tool chain? So it says the tools chain in Nightly is not installed. And so I'll just wait, I just copied wrong. I'm not going to do the cargo clean anyways, uh, again, because I actually don't care uh, what the compile time is for the clean build. I care what the compile time is for the dirty build. Maybe I'll be able to get uh, Rust format working as well once I've installed Nightly. That would be a nice bonus. That's really confusing. Okay, so now it wants to do everything over again. I'm going to go back to reading these tips on making it faster. I guess I can close this since I've figured out how to install Nightly despite the fact that it shows an error. Um,
I'm not interested in initial builds. I'm interested in like the tight, tight loop. So I, I guess I should be trying to build with O0 as well, because that should be faster. Since it's doing all optimizations now. I'm not sure about replacing my computer. I just, it's a lot of money and I'm not like 100% sure if it's going to fix issues. And it just seems to me like this computer is fast enough. If it's not capable of dealing with it, then, then is a faster computer really going to be that much better? And is it like the right way of dealing with things in the life? I just, I, I remember as a kid using like eight megabytes of RAM or 40 megabytes of RAM and developing on those computers. And the thing is that when I was writing software on a computer with eight megabytes of RAM, I didn't really, really mind the build times. You know, the build times were fine. They were about the same as they are now. <laughs> That's the insane thing. Of course, I didn't have a whole bunch of libraries that I was pulling in. I was writing really simple code, but... <laughs> It seems to me like we make our build time slower to match the hardware, basically. So I got to the end of that article. I still don't see any like tables or anything like that.
Okay, so now I need to, well, I can check if uh, it's done yet. No? Hmm. Ah. I guess the thread ripper would be better for me uh, since I'm doing the recording. But at the same time, thread ripper is very expensive, if I recall correctly, like a thousand bucks. So it seems to me this person has a very similar uh, setup to mine. I have an Intel i5, I think, as well. And this person upgraded to a Threadripper and their compile times are four times faster across the board. Except for in this case, FFmpeg is 10 times faster. And yeah, everything else. Ah, uh, Rust is also 10 times faster. I don't like the 280 watt TDP. I don't want to waste electricity like that. Maybe I should think about paying by the hour for like a super, super powerful computer instead. But I don't know, like if I'm SSHing into a computer, how to like make it all work. Like here I'm just doing develop development, but even now I, for example, attach to the local uh, home server using Element and I don't want to have to spend extra time like figuring out networking issues. I wonder if I can like, like somehow get it so that like the virtual machine is working, but then I would have to worry about slow network connection to here. Um, like if I were to run the whole desktop in, on, in the cloud, I don't know. So link time. Run linker, 
20 seconds. Total, and if I do this again, does it? Okay, so now it's one second. And if I go ahead and change something, I don't know what, uh, like that, and rerun it. This is gonna be the number that I'm actually interested in. Well, obviously this blocking waiting for file lock on build directory is also slowing me down quite a bit. So maybe it is Emacs that's causing that blocking. So I think that the 20 second linking time, rust mold linker, How do I use that with Rust? It's written in C. So I need to install mold. Linking time is still like 17 seconds. It's actually of the 22 seconds, linking time is, is a huge majority. So it's probably much better for me to spend time working on linking time than to spend time, spend money and time getting a faster computer. So, um, I guess the other thing that I need to check is if I do minus O zero, does that Uh-huh, minus C.
Okay, so that only makes it more extreme. Uh, that uh, total is now 19 seconds. So there's only two seconds to build and 17 seconds to link. Uh, so now what I need to do is I need to go here and copy this into cargo.toml. Uh, Emacs, I, I closed Emacs and What's going on? Do you, vegan buddies, util, util, matrix bot tester. And here, I want to put this like that. And then I want to go here to I, I want to go here and in this docker file I want to install clang and mold and then I want to do exit and I want to do cat make file uh, I want to go ahead and copy this. Again, I'm going to be waiting th for things to build. If I ever have time, I should send the pull request to Docker to make it so that it doesn't send the entire build context, including uh, ignored things, to the daemon. So, um, Debian does not have a package named mold. Debian package search. Buster, oh, where is the search box? Maybe Car uh, maybe Kagi is able to Debian. So I need to maybe change it from Buster to Sid <laughs> as like the easiest way of fixing that. Wait, shell command not found? Oh, that's bad. Um. Ah, yes, this isn't the problem with... <laughs> uh, it's the uh, make, new make actually wants there to be the, the shell thing there.
What? That's nasty. It sends the entire build context over to the Docker daemon and then tells me Maybe there, maybe it's not actually sending the entire build context because it says that uh, the entire directory is 8.3 gigabytes and the build context was only 2.5. So maybe, maybe there's just an issue that this has got something giant in it. target is 2.5 gigabytes. So I'm going to go ahead and try uh, whether that doesn't help. Wow! Amazing! So that's much faster. And now it says Rust Sid not found. Hub.docker.com. Buster, Buster, Bullseye. Is Bullseye or Buster later? Debian 12. What is the code name for Debian 12? Bookworm. So this does not have a bookworm or a SID version. So now if I go over here, uh, that's probably not what I need. So instead of doing this, I'm going to go ahead and do Debian SID and then I'm going to install Rust Cargo, something like that. Maybe this will work. Should have probably used Bookworm instead, but... I'm going to change it. No point in wasting time installing something that's probably broken. Or not probably, but likely. But it, I think that this was also the work in progress one, so I'm not, I'm not really sure now. Go ahead and check on... Ob BS again. Two hours and 
I'm gonna have to stop soon. It's it's getting late. I'm getting tired. What? What? Really? Really? Um, like I'm saying really not at the fact that Rust isn't there, but the lib std stdc++8 version 8 isn't there. And I need, I think, version 8 specifically. I'll try a different version, I guess, but I was pretty convinced lib std c++ Why isn't there the ability to search here? I don't... Why isn't there like a search here? It's search box. It's so frustrating. You have to go here and then you can search. 10. I'll try 10. but I seem to remember that I needed it specifically version eight. Okay, this is very slow. I'm not gonna wait for this. I'm gonna go and do something else. Um, I don't know if there's any point in even looking at faster computers right now because it seems to me like the problem is not the speed of my computer. It's the, it's the fact that this linker is like somehow nonsensically slow. Um, So in the meantime, I can continue looking through this uh, documentation for the matrix SDK. And I'm going to try to find if there's a way to receive a message without using the callback or try to think how I would make it so that the state uh, for, since I'm going to have like a state machine that, um, has the uh, script that the mock client is supposed to read and then the expectations, the replay script. Um, I guess one thing that I could do is I could have it so that there was a future that um, returned uh, a stream of um, expectations and messages to send. And then I would have it so that the callback would consume that future somehow. Um, I guess that would be the super asynchronous way of doing things. Um, I would much prefer, for whatever reason, the very linear way of things. I just feel like it should start up, it should read the script out synchronously, and then it should exit without any async stuff whatsoever, because I want it to be a test program, and I want it to be very, very linear and simple. Um, but what is sync with callback? 
callback, a callback that will be called every time a successful response has been fetched from the server. The callback must return a boolean which signalizes if the method should stop syncing. If the callback returns continue, the sync will continue. If the callback returns break, the sync will be stopped. Okay, so can this callback um, contain state? Okay, I think that it's pretty obvious that the callback can because we can do async move and then we can move the sync channel uh, to into the callback and use that in this example. Um, so maybe sync with callback would be the right thing to do, but at the same time, I need to be mostly sending um, messages right or i could like have two threads one that would be sending the messages and sending the expectations to the channel and the other that would be checking in the channel to see if the expectations were met um so I guess that I can work with sync with callback. Uh, and I need to figure out how to join a room or how to create one of these um, uh, private rooms. Uh, So join room by ID is obviously not what I need. I need to like create the room, create room, and I need to invite one person to the room, create a room using the room builder and send the request. Sends a request to blah, 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 and returns a response. This is an empty response. Um, I'm just checking, I see that it built, and now I want to do dot slash develop again, and I want to check if I'm not able to build faster with this mold thing. Hopefully my shell history has been conserved so that I don't have to look up again this. Uh-huh. So... Uh, cargo, cargo install rust up. What?
Really? They do it like that? Okay. I'll see if curl is installed by default. Oh, uh huh. I'm I'm tired. Curl is not there. I'm putting this on its own line because I want to take advantage of caching. I don't want to reinstall everything again. Hopefully that cargo thing is not going to uh, interfere with um, uh, the thing that I'm installing. Wait, what just happened? Something got like reduplicated. Okay, so now it's installing the installer and I can go back to reading about how this matrix SDK works. Um, I'm a little bit curious like if matrix uh, uh, protocol only uses HTTPS or if it uses WebSockets as well. Because I know that like all of the matrix clients that I've used have been very, very slow. And I've always thought to myself, well, if I, I'm not using the matrix.org web server, it'll be fast. But maybe matrix protocol is just nonsensically slow and not modern but I've always heard of it as being modern, so... Um, uh, is there a way that I can read the open standard? I don't care about reference implementations. I want the client server API. So the mandatory baseline for client server communication in Matrix is exchanging JSON objects over HTTP APIs. HTTPS is recommended for communication, although HTTP may be supported as a fallback to support basic HTTP clients. More efficient optional transports will in future be supported as optional extensions, e.g. a packed binary encoding over stream cipher encrypted TCP socket for low bandwidth, low RAND trip mobile usage. For the default HTTP transports, all H API calls use a content type of application ESON. In addition, all strings must be encoded UTF-8. Um, so it's just going to like busy pull the server. Client authentication, I'm not really interested in that. But how does it sync? Maybe I should just search, like, 
matrix web sockets. Uh huh. Currently, matrix clients use long pulling to get the latest date from the server. That's terrible. It becomes an issue when you have a lot of clients. It's not just an issue when you have a lot of clients. It's an issue in general. It's very, very slow because home server needs to process a lot of requests. That's not the problem, but which by the way may return nothing. It affects network bandwidth. Each time client sends requests, it creates a new HTTP request with headers, cookers, and other stuff. For mobile clients, it spends their cellular inter internet and eats money and eats their battery. When home server uses SSL, blah, 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 long pulling is just awful. Proposal server sent events is a way for servers to push events to clients. It was part of HTML5 standard and now available in all major web and mobile browsers. It was specifically designed to overcome challenges related to short long pulling. By introducing this technology, we can get the next benefits. Only one persistent connection per client is kept open forever. SSC is built on top of HTTP protocols so it can be used in communication between servers. SSC is more compliant with existing IT infrastructure like load balancer, firewall, act, etc. Web and mobile browsers support automatic reconnection and last event ID heard out of the box. Matrix protocol is built over HTTP, so SSE should fit good in protocol specification. Um, Two thousand and nineteen. I'm going to check on my build here. So it's built. I don't know what the difference between server-side events and uh, SSE and WebSockets is. Like, are they related somehow? WebSockets and SSE are both capable of pushing data to browsers. However, they are not competing technologies. WebSockets, connection, WebSockets connections can both send data to the browser and receive data from the browser. A good example of an application that could use WebSockets is a chat application. SSE connections can only push data to the browser. Online stock quotes or Twitter's updating timeline or feed are good examples of an application that could benefit from SSE. In practice, since everything can be done with SSE, can also be done with WebSockets. WebSockets is getting a lot more attention and love, and many more browsers support WebSockets than SSE. However, it can be overkill for some types of application, and the backend could be easier to implement with a protocol such as SSE. Furthermore, SSE can be polyfilled into older browsers that do not support it natively using, Java, using just JavaScript. Some implementations of SSE polyfills can be found on the modernizer GitHub page. 
gotchas. SSC summer suffers from a limitation in to the maximum number of open connections, which can be specifically painful when opening various tabs as the limit is per browser and set to a very low number, 6. The issue has been marked as won't fix in Chrome and Firefox. This limit is per browser plus domain. So that means that you can open six SSC connections across all of the tabs to example1.com and another S six SSC connections to example2.com. Uh, only WebSockets can, can transmit both binary data and UTF-8. SSC is limited to UTF-8. Thanks. Uh-huh. Uh, some enterprise firewalls with packet inspection have trouble dealing with WebSockets. Uh... That's their problem. Um, so actually, Matrix is a generally out of date protocol for chat. Um, I don't think that WebSockets is an instant messaging protocol. That's a little bit bizarre way of putting it. Okay, this is um, uh, blog spam. Uh, so I'm going to lower this person. Um, but I'm not... I wonder if WebSockets can be used with XMPP or like how the XMPP protocol works. Like, what is the transport? Okay, so I'm not really sure what's going on here, but I think that unfortunately I need to go ahead and remove that and put here curl and rebuild everything. Big waste of time, but anyways. So I've learned that I don't like the matrix pro uh, protocol. Um, I'm not really sure why they want to use server sent events instead of web, web sockets. Um,
Just to add a little note here, I decided to write in my own little personal testbed for server sent events backed backend as a separate little middleware server in Ruby. It should fit in beside regular Synapse, a regular Synapse instance and just requires a reverse proxy to route that to it, at which point it will take over and run a sync loop for each request. Um, any updates? This would be a very important feature to have, especially for mobile users or areas with spotty, very spotty internet connection where a multitude of requests actually hurts performance quite a lot. Um, this proposal needs to be updated in order to be reviewed again. I'm currently working on my open source project and don't have time to fix this. You can join and help fix all the suggestions and merge back in my repo so we can continue discussion in the same PR. Um, An extension to MSC 3079 to support WebSockets may be an alternative to this proposal. It requires more client and server work, but saves far more bandwidth than this proposal can hope to. Servers can use a proxy initially, so it doesn't help server resources too much, and clients can use HTTP shims interceptors. Uh, so... This is kind of like on ice for a couple of years. So currently matrix protocol is badly out of date. And that's why everything is so incredibly slow on matrix. And I'm currently investing in a protocol that is technically uh, not up to par. Hmm. Hmm. And that's why my battery on my mobile phone is getting eaten. And anyone who installs the Vegan Buddy app is going to have horrible battery problems. Uh, since I'm going to be using Matrix. That doesn't seem very appealing to like drain people's batteries. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. And Synapse is still getting like actively developed, even though like this protocol is just like blatantly terrible. People are like spending lots and lots of time developing something that is on a f technically like nonsensical foundation. I don't understand it. Like, why don't they fix the technical problem, like the gaping hole? Uh... In the protocol. Hmm. I'm confused. And this is still building. I'm going to sign off for now. I'm going to leave this to build and, or nay, no, I want to finish it. I want to figure out, I want to find out today if mold is significantly faster or not. I'm curious.
Wait, what's happening? Uh-huh, I see. It just got to the part where it's installing Rust. Okay, so... I'm so confused about this whole, like... It just long pulls. Just long pulls. I'm just, like, baffled by that. I guess, like, the thing is that perfectionists like me never actually do anything. Like, I'm thinking about, like, quitting doing doing it in matrix and starting to do it in a different protocol i didn't even know what protocol so i'm going to spend another three months searching for the protocol whereas people who aren't perfectionists um do things wrong but quickly and therefore they actually do things Thinking. The, to, I, I guess I actually need to read some of this thing to understand how how Matrix works, because like the SDK is very very low level. Um, I'm not sure where I should start reading. Should I start reading? I guess I don't need to install read the authentication flow part. Um, Filtering. I should start with filtering. Filters can be created on the server and can be passed as parameter as a parameter to the APIs which return events. These are filters alter the data returned from those APIs. Not all APIs accept filters. Lazy loading room members. Membership events often take significant resources for clients to track. In an effort to reduce the number of resources used, clients can enable lazy loading of room members. By doing this, servers will attempt to only send membership events which are relevant to the client. Okay, so right now we've gone from authenticating to filtering. Uh, obviously, the specification is not intended to be read in order because I don't even know. I haven't gotten to the point where it's talking about um, uh, the events. Or, or like membership events, you know, membership events is described uh, somewhere down here, probably. And it's talking about filtering them before we've gotten to that part of the specification. So this is obviously out of order because it was kind of grown organically, I guess, through pull requests and nobody really noticed that it was out of order. Okay, so at least this is built so I can find out if mold is faster. Types of room events. Room events... Uh, Okay, so the model of conversation history is exposed by the client server API can be ex 
can be considered as a list of events. The server linear, linear, linearizes the eventually consistent event graph of events into an event stream at any given point in time. So, types of room events. Room events are split into two categories. State events. These are events which update the metadata state of the room, e.g. room topic, room membership, etc. State is keyed up by a tuple of event type and a state key. State in the room with the same key tuple will be overwritten. Uh, message events. These are events which describe transient once-off activity in a room. Typically, communications such as sending an instant message or setting up a voice over IP call. This specification outlines several events, all with the event type prefix m. Dot. See room events for the m. Dot event specification. However, applications may wish to add their own type of event, and this can be achieved using the REST API detailed in the following sections. If, a new, if new events are added, the event type key should allow the Java package, should follow the Java package naming convention, e.g. com.example.myapp.event. This ensures that event, this ensures event types are suitably namespaced for each application and reduces the risk of clashes. A room event format. The federation format of a room event, which is used internally by home servers and between home servers via the server, server API, depends on the room version in use by the room. See, for example, definitions of, in room version 1 and room version 3. However, it is unusual that a matrix client would encounter this event format. Instead, home servers are responsible for converting events into the format shown below so that they can easily be parsed by clients. Client event. The format used for events when they are returned from a home server to a client via the client server API or sent to an application service via the application service API. Name. Content event ID. Origin server TS timestamp uh huh room ID sender uh, fully qualified ID of the user who sent this event I presume that's like the name plus the home server state key uh, present if and only if the event is a state event the key making this piece of state unique in the room note that this is often an empty string. Okay, so I see that, uh-huh, cargo command not found. Rust up command not found. What? What? confused now. It installed it in the wrong place, didn't it? Mm.
Okay, so I guess what I can try is to look at the source for the official Docker Rust image and see how they install Rust. So they, they have like Buster and do they have a source here somewhere? Docker file Debian. Um, yeah. Yet another try. And so while that's going, I can return to trying to read this matrix protocol. Um, so So basically there's various room events and they can, they're usually the M dot event type, the message event type, but they can be other types of events. Um,
To read events, the intended flow of operation is for clients to first call the sync API without a since parameter. This returns the most recent message events for each room, as well as the state of the room at the start of the returned timeline. The response also includes a next batch field, which should be used as the value of the since parameter in the next call to sync. Whoa, 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 whoa. This returns the most recent message events for each room, as well as the state of the room at the start of the returned timeline. The response also includes a next batch field, which should be used as the value of the since parameter in the next call to sync. Finally, the response includes for each room a prev batch field, which can be passed as a start parameter to the rooms room ID messages API to retrieve earlier messages. For example, a sync request might return a range of four events. E uh huh. So the sync thing returns all events for all rooms, and the and then each room has a room. ID messages uh, endpoint to get specific messages from that room. Uh, for example, a sync request might return a range of four events and uh, within a given room omitting two prior events E0 and E1. This can be visualized as follows. Blah 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 blah. Clients then receive new events by long pulling the, ser the home server via the sync API, passing the value of the next batch field from the response to the previous call as the since parameter. The client should also pass a timeout parameter. The server will then hold open the HTTP connection for a short period of time, waiting for new events, returning only if an event occurs. Only the sync API and the deprecated events API support long pulling in this way. Continuing the example above, an incremental sync might report a single new event E6. The response can be visualized as blah 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 blah. Normally, all new events which are visible to the client will appear in the response to the sync API. However, if a large number of events arrive between calls to sync, a limited timeline is returned, containing only the most recent message events. A state delta is also returned, summarizing any state changes in the omitted part of the timeline. The client may therefore end up with gaps in its knowledge of the, of the message timeline. The client can fill these gaps using the rooms, room ID message API. Mm-hmm. Continuing our example, suppose we make a third sync request asking for events since the last sync by passing the next batch token XYZ as the since parameter. The server knows about four new events but decides this is too many to report at once. Instead, the server sends a limited response containing E8, E9, and E10, but emitting E7. This forms a gap, which we can see in the visualization. The limited response includes a state delta, which describes how the state of the room changes over the gap. This delta explains how to build the state prior to return to returned timeline. Uh, there's a grammatical error there. I'm going to check the build. Uh-huh, it's done. Okay, so now things look are, are looking good. Now I need to install Nightly and go back to reading my thing. Okay, so uh, 
To close the gap, the client should make a request to rooms room ID messages with the query parameters from XI, XYZ to DEF. Uh huh. Synchronize the client state with the latest. So, so we have this sync uh -huh, endpoint. And I guess this is kind of repeating what we just read previously in maybe a little bit more dense language. I guess what's going on is that this documentation is partially automatically generated and partially manually written. And like each endpoint has its description. And since we previously read the manually written, handwritten part, it actually described this endpoint for us. Um, so each room has a um, an endpoint for sending events to the room and state events can be sent using this endpoint these end uh, okay so hmm i don't really understand this is this for sending messages? So we have one put state events. I'm not sure what a state event is yet, to be honest. And then we have message events. Um, Redactions. Uh, so, so first I'll look at this message event thing, or, or maybe I'll check uh, to to see. Um. Two point nine seconds. Two point. Okay, so now I need to check. If that's not just because um, it isn't rebuilding anything. So util matrix bot tester src main. I'm just going to make some trivial change here. Mm. Add a period there. Well, it's not instantaneous. Hmm. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six Mississippi, seven Mississippi, eight Mississippi. Hmm. 35 seconds is even worse. 
Run linker took 24 seconds. And which linker is it? Um, total time was 35 seconds. 24 of that was linker. Wait, total is 30 seconds? Uh, this is really confusing. It, it has here 30 seconds or 31 second total, and here it has 35 second total. I'm not really sure what's up with that. Maybe this isn't including like lock file contention. Um, perhaps it didn't use the linker for some reason that I specified. Cargo.toml. What happens if I put like some wrong path? User bin mold. So I'll do like mold non existent. If I do that, then it should like show an error. If Get rid of that period again. So obviously that's not uh, being used mold is not being used because it should show an error. I think that there's some problem with this target thing. Um, Not really sure though, like. Hmm. 
I am confused. It doesn't seem like mold's any faster. Okay, I'm going to sign off. I'm way too tired. Okay, so see you next week.